Okay, so let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Um, take a look at that. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10. And Paul writes, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now, of course, uh, in the context here, it can be assumed that Paul is speaking of that other salvation, that, that salvation from hell, the salvation from the wrath of God poured out on sinners for eternity in hell that refuse to humble themselves and receive our Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, as their sacrifice. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself suffered the wrath of God in our place so that we might not have to. Uh, so that's how he, he it says to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead Jesus who delivered which delivered us he did that by suffering the wrath of God on the cross. Uh, he delivered us from the wrath to come and that wrath of course is uh, the wrath of God poured out in the lake of fire. However uh, Paul wrote in the same book about the rapture. And so uh, this verse can be used to add to the mounting evidence of a pre-trib rapture uh, because not only did he deliver us from the wrath of hell, but he also, as we just learned from 1 Thessalonians uh, 4 and 5, that he delivered us from the wrath to come during the tribulation. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. Now we're going to hit all 13 verses. So I'll just go uh, slowly one at a time here. Uh, before we do, let me remind you that Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica about the rapture. Uh, he wrote about the rapture. Uh, I just want to point that out. Uh, he, he, he had already written to these people about the rapture. So let's, let's move on. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together unto him. This is a reference to the rapture. This is what happens at the rapture. Notice the words. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him. He gathers us together at the rapture. We already quoted and spoke about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the end verses there. We've talked about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where he gathers us together. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 14, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go away to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am ye may be also. Uh, it's talking about heaven. So this gathering together is what we have in view here, the rapture. Verse 2. Now he's going to tell the Thessalonians why he's writing this letter why he's speaking about this subject, the rapture. I'm writing this, he says, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Okay, in other words, the Thessalonians, for some reason, they were scared and thought they were in the tribulation. So Paul's writing this letter, specifically this part of the letter, to assure the, uh, the Thessalonian Christians that they're not in the tribulation. Be and he's reminding them that he already taught them uh, that they wouldn't go through it. Uh, so let's, let's continue. Verse 3.
Let no man deceive you by any means. And let me just back up for a second and say that uh, the day of Christ, it says. Uh, some translations translate it the day of the Lord. Uh, I believe uh, for the context, they're one and the same. Uh, so I believe it's the tribulation. Otherwise, why would the Thessalonians be scared? Uh, if they missed the rapture, they would be upset about that. Uh, if they missed the tribulation, I don't think they'd be upset about that. So they definitely were upset. And so I would say the day of... My point is in verse 2, the day of Christ is synonymous with the day of the Lord, the tribulation. Verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now let's stop there. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. Apparently, by thinking they were in the tribulation and they missed the rapture, they were deceived. And anyone that believes that the rapture is not a pre-trib rapture, according to this, is deceived. So let no man deceive you by any means, as the, as the Word of God says. Now, it says, let, man, let no man deceive you by any means, except there come a falling away first. Now, let's stop right there. The Greek word falling away has been uh, wrongly translated by the beloved King James Bible. I love my King James Bible. I think it is the best English translation, but it's not perfect. I believe, I believe it is the best and most powerful, uh, most accurate translation of the Bible. Not perfect. Uh, <clears throat> falling away, the Greek word apostasia, literally means to stand away from. To stand away from. Uh, it's a reference to the rapture, the preacher of rapture. Matter of fact, if not for the wrong translation of the King James translators, uh, this would be the undeniable, irrefutable, best flat-out verse in the New Testament uh, teaching a pre-trib rapture. 